This glowing CRT modulation glitch effect is one I've covered in the past on this channel and I've shown you several methods for arriving at some version of this using things like Photoshop or Adobe After Effects, different like glow plugins or displacement and often the process goes in and out of different effects and softwares to arrive at the end result and obviously whatever process is, it's kind of worth it because being able to replicate this kind of image digitally is very satisfying and kind of a high sought after thing given that previously or traditionally it is only done with hardware. I now have an updated version of this to show you that all takes place in just one software across basically a couple of sliders and this is definitely the quickest method I've come across for creating these visuals digitally. The method I'm going to show you today will work with video and images but I'm just going to show it on an image. I'm going to show it on an image that I've used in the past on this channel so that we can compare the new method to one of the old methods that I've used. The only software you will need for this video is Ditherboy, which is an app that we have been building all year in 2025. We just put out a brand new free update too. So if you want to learn more about that, I will leave everything Ditherboy related linked below. If you're new here though, Ditherboy is a one-time purchase software and it is the home to basically my favorite effects. And yeah, we've had a lot of fun this year making all this new stuff and just adding it into this software for free so that all our existing users can just get access to stuff all in one place when I'm making tutorials like this. So anyway, to get into it, I've got Ditherboy open here and I've got this image from an old tutorial that I did. This is a stock image from Unsplash. I will go and grab the link for it, but I'll also tell you how you can get this effect working on other images as well. So because this is a pretty quick effect, all you're going to need to do is go to style, come down to glitch effects, and you're going to want to pick modulated diffuse Y, modulated diffuse X, uniform modulation Y or X, contrast aware YRX or smooth diffuse or you can even go for waveform if you want. I'm going to go for modulated diffuse Y on this because I want it to be along the Y axis and this is effectively a diffusion dither like this which is just being forced to dither along one axis. So as you can see if you were anticipating this to be like a 10 step thing we're very nearly there just with with this one effect applied. Now depending on your preference I like to work on the dither first but just to show you the new effect here. I'm going to tick the effects tick box and you're going to see here we've got a new effect called Epsilon Glow. And just to make sure that this isn't interfering too much in what we're making here, I'm going to turn down the intensity a little bit just for now. And I'm going to turn up the radius just to make sure that it's not completely blowing out what I'm actually working on in front of you so you can see what's going on. So for me, I'm going to lower the scale because I like my lines here to be nice and fine so you can still see the image coming through. And then if you want a bit more space between your lines here see how these are pretty close together you can just lower the contrast and the lines will begin to space out. This is because more luminance will result in more white values. So because this is being forced to dither along one axis, the brighter your image is or the brighter whatever section of your image is, the more dense the lines will be in that section. So that means that if you would like to have dense lines in certain sections, then you need to make sure those sections are closer to white than the rest of the image. So if you go all the way down with contrast, you'll land somewhere like this. And I'm going to inject some color in now. So you can go and choose a custom color palette if you like, but I'm just going to go and click on source, which will pull some color palettes from the original image. I'm going to try source three first. So I'll just turn up my depth a little bit. So we get the flowers in orange now. And from here, it is just iterating until you're happy with the lines and then balancing on this end so that you're happy with the glow that comes with it. Now, because we've got multiple systems at work here, the color distribution in Ditherboy also uses luminance. It doesn't aim to to paste your colors where they were before. And because I've darkened this image to get the sparse lines, we're also not seeing much color come through. So if I now up the contrast a little bit and just up the depth to match it and keep going, there is another color being introduced here, but you probably can't see it because of the way I've got the glow set up. So I'm gonna up the glow threshold as well. So you can see you've got the blue, orange, and the maroon background now. So if you wanna sacrifice your background lines, you can bring in more shading here in in the foreground and then use the threshold slider to isolate certain parts or 
of the depth from the palette here and have it so only that part of your image has the glow effect on it or you can just turn the threshold down to zero and the entire image will get glow but i wouldn't recommend that personally i don't i prefer it more like this so low depth low contrast this is way way prettier in my opinion i way prefer this i just wanted to show you how that works so you can get a bit more out of this if you want now i mentioned those other algorithms earlier on so if we switch to waveform next you can get something very similar going here so it'll keep your glow and it'll keep your setup here in the adjustments but we're going to need a little bit more contrast to make the waves bend to form the shape of the flowers here so you can't go quite as low when you've got waveform otherwise you will just get sort of a shape almost in the background of the waves rather than having the waves actually form your image out now if you've been paying attention you'll know the reason i'm bringing this up as like an alternative is because what we got in return previously for more luminance was the possibility to introduce more color now we are using luminance to bend the waves here we can also bring in more depth and again and then if you further adjust the threshold a little bit you can see now that you get the background waves you get your primary and secondary color and you can isolate the glow to just one part of this as well so depending on the algorithm you choose and the depth of the palette that you set up there's quite a lot more flexibility here without having to redo like whole big steps so that means that you could sit here and just like export a bunch of different versions of this with different algorithms you know, varying levels of glitchiness or low fineness, which isn't really a word. But yeah, this version of the effect just really allows for quite a lot more iteration. So I'm a couple of clicks away from, from the last version we had here. It's just a lot of fun to mess with. And I think a far better process than any method I've covered before for getting to this type of visual. Now, obviously not all images are the same, but if you just bear in mind here that when you import and you choose one of these algorithms, you are just getting a diffusion algorithm like Floyd Steinberg, but it is being forced to dither along only one axis of your image and your control points here are lower luminance will result in bigger gaps between the lines. It will also result in the colors from the lower part of your palette being mostly what make up your image. And so you need to match up your glow threshold to make sure it sort of catches the foreground colors of what's going on in your dither. Me explaining that and you hearing it might not like tick all the boxes for understanding this, but if you can open up and just start messing around with an image, you will quickly pick this up and, and work out what's going on and how to, you know, get what you want out of this. Now, I said earlier that this works with video. So when you went to import at the start, if you click on import and you just do import video instead, or you can come to file video import video select a video file do the exact same stuff and then just go file video export video and it will compile the effect together into a video file and you'll be able to get the effects that you built up with me here on your video so my curse is that i love this effect and i every time i make the video covering it i think oh this will be the last time i cover this effect now because i don't think there'll be a better version of this that i can find really and then i have yet again found another version of this that you can do so maybe one day i'll be back here making this effect again but for now this is in my opinion the best way to get here even something like this like I, I do need to end this tutorial but here I've got an eight color palette with the depth set to five and so you've got these background lines that you can see but with the glow threshold set to 25 only the petals of the flower are glowing so this looks really really cool because we're we're using luminance to isolate certain parts in our dithering pattern isolate certain parts in our color and isolate parts of the image for glow as well and the benefit here of doing it this way means that it's the same system you understand luminance with dithering and you can then understand how to get really whatever you want out of this effect i will show on screen some iterations that i got out of this to give you some ideas and we'll also show on screen the method output from my last tutorial and this one as well so we can like compare or you can see which one you might prefer obviously i'm not taking down any of the old videos showing this method so if this one isn't for you and you prefer the old ones then you can always go watch those as well but as always more did the voice stuff come in we got more updates and i got more tutorials like this coming as well but thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video